Hello all readers and everyone else. Welcome to my channel. I hope you guys are all fine and like always, I also hope that you guys are reading a book. Uh, back with a very heartwarming and um, I would say a cozy read. In fact, if you're looking for a reading inspiration for December, a book that would allow you to slow down and relax and curl up with, I think uh, you should be picking up this one. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. It's called Welcome to the Yunam Dang Bookshop. It's, um, it's actually a Korean novel and it's translated and I absolutely enjoyed it. I have to tell you that uh, I'm sure uh, um, you guys would have seen that there is a trend of uh, books based on bookshops and readers and I'm all for it. I have been thoroughly enjoying these reads, no complaints and I just get so excited every time I come across a title which is, um, you know, based on bookshops or readers and this one did not disappoint at all. Coming to the plot of the story, so our, and it's actually a very cute uh, paper bag if you see, there is a snapshot of the bookshop here, if you see. Um, now, coming to the plot of the story, our main character is Yongju. She is someone who is currently at the crossroad. Um, she is really tired and drained out, tired from her toxic work environment and the uh, overload of work. Basically, she's someone who is experiencing the after effects of burnout. Plus, uh, she's also suffering from the relentless demands of her marriage. So she's currently at the crossroad where she doesn't know what she has to do with her life. Um, and she's so tired and drained out and is actually undergoing through stress and anxiety and depression. And uh, But there is this old dream that keeps nagging at her. It's the dream of, um, you know, opening a bookshop, you know, a dream that I think all the readers um, carry it in their heart uh, that, uh, you know, one day we will open a bookshop and, you know, I also have that dream. But yeah, so this old dream keeps nagging at her and, you know, one day she feels that um, it's too much and she cannot keep going forward like this. So she decides to leave her old life. She leaves her jobs. She divorces her um, husband and she settles in a very cute uh, and quaint neighborhood, uh, which is actually the Yunam Dong uh, neighborhood in Seoul in Korea. And that's why the book name is Yunam Dong. And uh, so she settles there and she opens a cozy bookshop. Now, um, initially when she opens the bookshop because she has, you know, it's like her li life has currently turned upside down and uh, she's very sad with what happened with her husband. So all she does is that she sits in the bookshop and she cries and she keeps crying the whole day. And uh, so much so that, you know, looking at her, she even sometimes scares the visitors and readers who walk in the bookshop. She basically scares them away. But, uh, you know, as the days pass and she gets time to mull over her situation, she realizes that what it takes to be a, a good bookseller and, uh, you know, what it takes to have a good bookstore. So while she is finding her bookselling philosophy, she, uh, you know, kind of exerts herself and um, in the bookshop. She starts reading voraciously. She starts ho hosting, uh, you know, interesting author events and uh, starts blogging as well and while she's doing that she you know kind of um, settles in in this new life and she's happy she's reasonably happy of course there are moments when she gets really sad but she's happy now while she's exerting herself into the world of literature she comes across these very interesting um, you know characters unique characters which i think makes the book so special so um you know we have uh, a ceo of a coffee company we have a part-time barista who starts working at the bookshop he is someone who is kind of tired of the rat race in seoul um we have an interfering mother who is you know done with her undisciplined child and you know as a punishment she tells him that you need to you know go to this bookshop and send a few hours um we also come across a girl who um you know kind of comes into the bookshop she sits and she meditates she just looks out and she does not do anything for hours together and then eventually we see her that she starts sitting and knitting and crocheting in the bookstore 
So these are some of, and there is also a blogger who helps people to become better writers. And in turn, he, uh, you know, grabs a deal of uh, authoring a book. So these are some of the interesting characters that, uh, you know, find their way to the bookstore. Now, um, you know, as uh, the story progresses, we see that um, these unique characters, you know, that uh, they have, you know, come in the bookshop, they all have um, something common that they are uh, dealing with. So it's usually uh, the burnout effects and the exhausting week, working weeks that they have. We have the kids who are, you know, just um, so tired and exhausted with the competitive exams culture. And, uh, you know, yeah, so they're basically uh, suffering with um, some of the difficult things that come along with adulting. And, uh, you know, as their life, you know, weaves in and out of the bookstore, we find that these people find passion and meaning in their life. You know, it's all about these lost souls coming together in the bookstores and how as the day progresses, they find passion and meaning in their life, you know, uh, with whatever else that they're dealing in life. And it's not just them, you know, while the character story is evolving, the bookstore also evolves. So we see that this cute little bookshop, you know, how it evolves from not just being a commercial unit, um, you know, of making profit, it becomes a cultural hub where people come together and they discuss uh, on common things and uh, people hear you out, there is no judgment. So, you know, it becomes like a really nice space. And uh, eventually, I think, surrounded by friends and writers and books, Yongjo, uh, you know, discovers a new story for herself. Um, she's also happy that the bookstore has become a place which uh, kind of attracts lost souls who, you know, uh, find solace from their grueling lives and, you know, the daily lives and whatever things are happening in their lives. They find solace in the bookstore, in the written words, and they come and they, you know, uh, they heal, they read together, they connect um, with books and, you know, they all realize um, towards the end that it's never too late to actually scrap your old plot and start a new plot. It's never too late. And I think that was uh, personally for me a very beautiful message uh, from this book. Um, you know, as a reader, you also... Um, come across some of the practical challenges of running a bookshop. I'm sure all of us have this dream that, you know, we want to open a cute little bookshop, but there are certain practical or many practical ch uh, challenges that comes, you know, with running a bookstore. And uh, I really like that the author has discussed those, you know, like what makes um, a good bookstore? What are the books that you should be storing? Uh, should it be the best sellers or should you be finding, you know, what really clicks with your readers? And what are some of the events that you can do and, you know, the art of recommending books to your customers and uh, yeah, some of these things, you know, what really makes your bookstore special and how in this world, digital world where, you know, there's always this bookstores being shutting down, how an independent uh, bookstore can basically survive and what are the things that they can do different. So that was uh, another aspect of the book that I really enjoyed. I think if I have to really tell you that, uh, you know, what this book is about, like quickly summarize it in a few lines. This book is not just about a bookshop and opening a bookshop. I think this book is a lot uh, more. It is about, um, you know, finding the meaning of life. So these interesting characters along with Yongju's background story that we come across, uh, you know, it's all of them finding the meaning of life. What is life? What is a good life? How do you find happiness? And I think, uh, you know, somewhere when I was uh, reading these uh, about the book more online, I came across this line, which, you know, perfectly summarizes this book. It's about, you know, finding meaning in your daily work, even when you don't find your work meaningful. And I think that was such a powerful sentence. And that's exactly what this book has done. You know, you realize that, all these characters, they might not be happy with how their career has taken a turn and their, you know, contractual jobs that they have where there is a lot of uncertainty. And even if they're not happy, but still, how do you find meaning in your daily life and in your daily work when you, you know, truly feel that what you're doing is not meaningful? Um, so yeah, that was, uh, I think, a very special takeaway message for me. And I absolutely love this book. 
um so yeah why you should read this book if you're looking for a heartwarming read about books and human connection this is the book that you should be picking it up and i think uh, what really helps is that this book is not something that you have you can read it at one setting or at one go it needs to be you know like slowly taken in you know sit with your tea and coffee and really enjoy the cozy atmosphere of this book i think uh, for some of you the pace might seem slow but i think that was the whole idea because it talks about slow living and um, yeah so i really enjoyed this book and i hope you guys um, pick this one and read if you have read please share your comments um you know in the comments about how did you find this book but if you have not i really hope that this book review helped in uh, making you decide if you want to read this book or not uh that's all on this book i'm going to see you guys next week with another title till then take care bye bye and keep reading <laughs> bye